I know I've been around a narcissist for decades and I've had a lot of them in my family and in my jobs because I used this sentence. I used this sentence that made me attractive to narcissists. It's like blood in the water for sharks. Once they hear this sentence, they're all about it because they know you are a tailor-made victim and they can just use you. It's like you got kick me on your back, a victim on your shirt. Use me. That's what it's like. And that I'm going to tell you how to use me. Hey, wonderful person. Here we are again talking about narcissism. And the one sentence that binds you to a narcissist. And this is total, it, it, it's, it's, it warps your mind into thinking a certain way and it also alerts the narcissist and any people who have narcissistic tendencies or other people who just want to use you. So it's like a broad, it's like a whistle telling everybody manipulate me and I'm, t I'm going to give you the, the rule book on how to manipulate me. It's crazy. And this starts when we're born, right? Uh, oh, before we get into it, of course, if you like this sort of content, hit the like button. It helps the channel out, and I'm terribly grateful for that. And subscribe. We're building up the subscribers. We're almost at 600 uh, subscribers now, um, and we're getting a message out. We're changing people's lives. We're helping people, and we're trying to live our best lives here, right? This is what this, all, this is all about. So let's get on to it. What is this sentence? Well, it's makes me basically when you put that into a sentence you're basically saying circumstances make me but it doesn't it almost never sounds like that it sounds like this the narcissist is having an, an argument with you what else is new right they're <laughs> aggravating you right and <clears throat> you tell, either tell yourself in your head or you say it out loud that this is that they're making you angry that them they this situation makes me angry. And it, 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 something like this. Every time you say that, it makes me angry. Or when you do that, it makes me crazy. Or you might say it to yourself in your head. Oh, I hate feeling like this. Why do I have to feel like this? Why do, do I let this person make me feel so angry? Make me feel so... Ugh right? That's the sense. Make me. It's not a make me. There's no make me there. Your feelings are your own. Nobody can make you feel anything. You're giving away your power to them. You're giving away your humanity to them. You're giving it all away by saying, you make me, you make me, you make me into something. That shouldn't be a case. You shouldn't be made into anything by anybody else. And you're giving that permission to somebody else. And worse, you're also giving that permission to your mind, telling your mind, this is how it works, right? This is how it works. This person makes me do things. These situations make me do things. Um, circumstances, just basic circumstances in the world make me do things. And so now this is going to, this is going to screw up your mind because now your mind is going to say, oh, well, I guess that's how it works. So circumstances are now what makes me jump, do things. And you know what a circumstance is? The narcissist is a circumstance. When you live with a, nar a narcissist, that is a big effing circumstance in your life. <laughs> that is a big circumstance. You cannot let circumstances dictate how you feel now i get it i get it i've been there myself a billion times the narcissist and they know all the buttons to push and this sentence also tells them what buttons to push when you say i it makes me or that makes me or you make me or what you're saying makes me feel or think or do or be you're telling the narcissist Write this down in your little mental notebook that this is what you need to do to manipulate me. Yeah, it tells them what you're all about. It tells them this is what I am. This is how I react to things. And these are the things I react to best. 
That's exactly everything the narcissist wants to know. You're giving them the textbook to your life, to your brain, to your health, to your mind. Okay, so the, this is kind of what it should be like. Here's a, here, you should be gray rocking the narcissist, first of all. I'll put a video of it right over here about how to gray rock the narcissist. But first of all, <clears throat> so this is the gray area in your behavior. When things go crazy, you'll go crazy. You'll go, let's say you'll go down, right? Anger, then you're happy, then you're angry, uh, then you're happy at something, and then a narcissist says something, you're livid, and you know, it goes like this. And they make mental notes of all of that because that's their job, that's their thing, that's the narcissist thing, right? To control you, they have to know how to control you. And when you fly off the handle, that's a control right there. That's your trigger. Uh, then now they can get their hooks in you and pull those little puppet strings on you. Gray rocking, you should be in this area. Oh, that's nice. You, you, don't, you don't go whoop. You go boop. That's bad. Boop. That's good. Boop. That's nice. That's bad. Good. Bad. Good. Bad. Good. That's where it should be. And a narcissist... <clears throat> They'll see that and they'll take note of that, but that's not what they're looking for. They can't get their hooks in you if, if you're in this middle gray zone. They can only get their hooks in you if you are made to feel something, really feel something. And the deeper you feel it, the more manipulation they can have over you. This is just Narcissist 101. This is Manipulation 101. When you tell them what it is that makes you, you are telling everybody, and this works for anybody who wants to manipulate you, anybody who wants to manipulate you. You need to never say that sentence again. You make me feel. To anybody, You. this makes me feel. I know you, um, some people say you should say that because what you're doing is you're dictating your feelings and then the empathetic person will say, oh, I didn't mean to hurt you. Let me dial that back. But what if you're not dealing with an empathetic person? What if you're dealing with a person that wants to hurt you? <laughs> you're giving them the, the, the whole rule book on how to do it. And you're continuously giving it. And worse than that, you're telling your mind that this is how it works. You're a victim of circumstance. You're a victim of the narcissist. You're a victim of the arguments. You're a victim of what people say, do, think, whatever. That's going to make your life a little horrible, especially if you're around a narcissist, because that's all the biggest circumstance in your life if you are around a narcissist is the narcissist, right? That's the biggest circumstance in your life. And you're open to that. You're telling your mind, this is how it works. Because your mind will believe it. If you tell your mind, I'm, I'm a victim of circumstance, your mind is going to say, okay, this is how it works now. And people believe in law of attraction. You tell the universe, I'm a victim of circumstance, then the universe gives you more circumstances to say that in. All these, all these beliefs come around the same thing. You are telling your life what to be by what you tell yourself in your head or out loud and that's how it's going to be so i mean if you tell yourself i'm as tough as nails arguments and words don't don't bother me at all if you told yourself that all your life right but you we get stuck when we're kids we're told and honestly, it's true when you're a kid, right? When you're two or three years old, you are a victim of circumstance. You see uh, uh, some cereal on the shelf that you want and you can't have it and you start crying and you can't even, you don't even know why. You can't even control it, uh, right? You're a victim of circumstance. And I understand when you're an adult, you're a, a victim of circumstance too in a lot of situations. No matter what you're no matter how you're trying to gray rock things or how get yourself under control, loved ones die, right? And you just can't control how you feel about that. Or you can control it to some degree, right? Maybe you're not throwing yourself on the floor. Maybe you're not trying to be so depressed. You're going out more to try and alleviate the, uh, the sadness or, or the grief or whatever it is. I get it. I get it. 
but you have to get that under control, especially when you're around a narcissist. Everything you are that's extreme, like happiness and sadness, will be used against you. Will be used against you. I know because I've tricked the narcissist. I told the narcissist that something that made me feel good, and I was proud of it, was actually something that made me upset. And the narcissist used that which was great because every time the narcissist brought it up, uh, I, I was like, oh, it kind of woke me up out of the situation, right? Sometimes these arguments are almost like hypnotic. Like they get you into this zone of thought that you are in this battle and it kind of takes you over. And when the narcissist said this thing that actually made me proud I was like oh that's right I'm, <laughs> I'm more capable than this I'm better than this thank you for reminding me narcissist but I didn't I didn't of course tell them because then that they won't use that anymore right <laughs> they are watching and everything and using everything against you what you like and what you hate and the more you like it and the more you hate it the more valuable it is and they they mark it in their mental notebook also it um by saying by not saying they make me or this makes me or or you make me by not saying that then who makes you you do and now you're taking back your own power now you have control over now you at least know you have control over your own thoughts even if you don't really feel like it because the narcissist is carrying on like a lunatic and it's making you feel right making you again it's making you feel angry not good things let's just say that because there's a whole litany in there who knows what the narcissist is doing now it's making you feel not good it's making you because you're letting it and it's your perspective and i know i've been around a narcissist for decades and i've had a lot of them in my family and in my jobs because I used this sentence. I used this sentence that made me attractive to narcissists. It's like blood in the water for sharks. Once they hear this sentence, they're all about it because they know you are a tailor-made victim and they can just use you. It's like you got kick me on your back, a victim on your shirt. Use me. That's what it's like. And that I'm going to tell you how to use me. And then once you, now you have the ability, now you know that for sure that the feelings are yours. And you don't have to feel a certain way. They're not making you anything. Now the ball is in your court and you know you can shape things in different ways. You don't have to feel the way you're feeling. But honestly, you know, what do you do with that? The first, when you start this, you're going to feel like you're betraying yourself. You're going to feel angry and pissed off. And your mind is going to be like, <clears throat> and then you're going to say, whoa, 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 whoa. A part of your mind is going to say, whoa, you don't have to feel this way. And it's going to feel like you're abandoning yourself or you're betraying yourself or you're not doing the right things. And this is a trick of the mind, because when you, when we were cave people, your anger, your righteousness, you know, you feel right in when you're angry, you, you feel perfectly right when you're angry, was the shield, was the weapon that you had to do whatever you had to do, which is probably fight back against an animal or an advers human adversary, honestly, <laughs> right? And this and the stakes were life and death usually so it wanted to keep this anger and and maybe feeling livid or hateful alive as long as necessary until you won right but you don't have to feel that way you don't have to win in order to feel better and i'll put in an example up here because there are a lot of people that are not attractive to narcissists people right they want the victims 
especially the tailor-made victims that give out the rule book on how to be manipulated to their life. That's what they want. They want it easy, you know. They, the sharks in the ocean, they don't want um, a perfectly healthy tuna. They don't want that, not really. They want the, the sick tuna. They want the tuna that's, that's slow and <laughs> looks like he's ready to be a victim. They, that's what the that's what the narcissists are looking for too. They're looking for a tailor-made victim, somebody who's say, putting their hand up and doesn't even know it, and saying, "Yes, I want to be a victim too." That's what they want because that person will help them uh, manipulate and victimize the victim. Now you're taking your power back, and you're realizing that doesn't have to be the case anymore. So what is the case? Well, you know there ha are eternally optimistic people you know these people these people that are the tree huggers you know and they're always telling you how good everything is and you don't need to be upset and you just need to see the brighter side of things and this doesn't matter 10 years from now it's not gonna matter hey dude it's not a matter dude it's not gonna matter this person doesn't matter and you know and, and they the right some people just don't care about anything like psychos don't care about other people, really. That it's like other people are NPC. You, know, you probably don't know what NPC characters are. <laughs> they're they're non-player characters in a game. They're just that player in the background. They're like an extra in a movie, um, and that's how psychos see all of us. Everybody else, they're. They don't have the connection in their brain in order to feel like other people matter. Um, and so the narcissist can't manipulate. There is no psycho on earth that's manipulated by a narcissist because that connection simply isn't there. The narcissist can't get their hooks in a, narcissist, in, in a psycho because when you don't feel those emotions from another person, so, like the narcissist would yell at them and abuse, verbally abuse them to get their hooks in them and, and, and manipulate them and pull the strings, the psycho would be like, I don't really care for this. I'm gone and leave. You know, like anywhere. Like if they were driving down the road, the psycho would just pull over to the side of the road, kick you out, kick the narcissist out. Or if they were the passenger, they'd say, pull over. And they'd get out and they'd say, bye. And, <laughs> right, right. We're always thinking of horror movies where the psycho just kills people. And that's because they just don't see people as valuable or anything really other than like almost shadows drifting across the wall. So how can a shadow, you know, get under your skin? Narcissists need to get under your skin. And when you say, you make me, that tells them exactly where to get under your skin. And it tells your mind that it's okay. This is, you're a victim anyway, right? <laughs> We're not going to do that anymore. So now you know what kind of... And you can... I have uh, about two different people I use, two different archetypes of people that I use when I get triggered like that by people who are abusive Um like in the workplace especially because you're going to come you're going to come in contact with a lot of people that are not nice that are manipulative they don't know how to and they don't have the tools to be successful in their job normally so they are abusive they take advantage they start rumors they t tell lies on you to get favors from other people and other people feel good about them now because they're not at fault this other person is, or you are, right? So you need a different voice in your head to go to and say, what would you, what would, what would this eternal optimist think? Well, he'd probably say, don't worry about it, dude. And in 10 years, you won't care about any of this. You won't even remember this. You're better than they are. It'll all come out that you're better than they are. And you can tip off the people that you're being lied on um, or you can fix the situation. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, like that. You need to go to a different voice in your head when you're like that. And that can help pull you over. I know it helps pull me back to some kind of sanity. 
because what's going to happen when you're angry and livid and all these high emotions you're in your like chimpanzee brain and your higher functions are not available to you anymore and, you, and it sounds like oh please really i mean i can talk i can speak <clears throat> yeah but can you say all the things that you wanted to say? No, you don't, right? <laughs> After the argument is over, you're like, oh, I should have said this. Oh, I should have said that. Oh, that's such a great idea. Why didn't I say that? Or you'll say, God, why did I say that? That's the stupidest thing. Because you weren't in your highest portion. The higher portions of your brain weren't available to you. When you calmed down, they were available to you and you knew all these fantastic things to say or all the things that you shouldn't say because you were in a part of your brain that made the more intelligent part of your brain unaccessible. You got too angry. I know I did it, I did it just a week ago. Uh, actually, a few days ago. <laughs> I let somebody get me angry and I had to realize, you know, why am I letting so why am i giving my power to the situation to this person there's no reason for that and i took it back i said no what would other people say about this what would the eternal optimist say about this yeah he'd say dude this this you know forget it it's not even an important thing or you i also use the um the joker you know, there's these people that joke about everything and everything's funny and everything's a joke. Uh, <laughs> those people can be annoying. I'm not telling you to be these people. I'm telling you to run, use them as a thought experiment in your head to get other narratives and other perspectives to break you out of that chimpanzee brain area in your head and bring you and give you more access to more intelligent parts of your brain and mind um, and that works it does work now that other person I meant the, the jokester what would a jokester look at a aggravating situation as they look at it as a joke they'd be like oh, they don't even know what they're doing you just yeah you just let them act up and then you can bring up later how stupid they were Go for it. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right? They, they would. And then it's like, oh, well, okay. Well, maybe the situation I was in wasn't, wasn't all that bad. Okay. Okay. I, I totally overreacted. I, I, I shouldn't have let it get me so upset. Okay. So now you know, I brought it down a few notches. Now I'm into, well, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have been like that. Now I'm going to start getting access to more of my mind. <laughs> Honestly, that is how it works. Then you'll see when you calm down, you have new thoughts and you can think more intelligently. And those things that you should have said or you shouldn't have said, <laughs> right? You'll know more. You'll actually be smarter. And this they've done tests like this. If you take an IQ test when you're angry or you're livid, you will trash it, right? You have to be in your logical mind. You have to be calm enough to think about things. And this goes for um, dating too, right? When you're trying to talk to somebody you're uh, intimidated by because they're so gorgeous or handsome or whatever, right? You'll, your insecurities will come out. That puts you back into this chimpanzee mind your higher brain functions aren't there and all the stuff you should have said or all the stuff you would have known better not to say <laughs> were, weren't available to you. Why didn't I say that? Oh God, why didn't I say that? Or, you know, guys like lines, they memorize these lines and then they get to the situation and they get so nervous, they just go blank. You're, you are actually physically cut off by a part by your brain to another part of your brain yeah like when you public speak when you speak in the uh, you do public speaking right like this right it's sort of happening with me now <laughs> yes it cuts off a certain part of right you get out there and there's 10,000 people out there and they're listening to every word you have to say about something and you totally forget 
you will totally forget about what you had to say because you're in fear now. Of course, if you didn't care, right? And then we go back to the psycho or maybe the eternal optimist or maybe the jokester. If you didn't really care that there's 10,000 people, ah, I don't care. Or oh, maybe you were a drunk, right? <laughs> Still, that's a, a situation where a person doesn't care. What would that person say? You know, and then you'd be the star of the whatever, uh, what a talk show or TED talk or whatever you were doing for the 10,000 people. You would absolutely be the star because you'd have access to all your mind and all the smartest and most intelligent and greatest things to say. And this is where this sentence can kill you. They make me. that The audience, the 10,000 people, they make me feel... Well, they don't make you feel, dude. <laughs> you make you feel. It's a story you tell. And I know. I've been with the narcissist. I had a jillion arguments with narcissists. And this is why. Because I let circumstances make me feel. I had a sign up in, in the apartment here for a year or so. I probably needed it for more than that. But I had been working on it before that. Circumstances don't matter. And that goes back to make me feel. Make me feel? What? No, it doesn't make me feel. And I just have to keep working on that because I was the person who was like, circumstances definitely make me feel. So let's boil this down here. So, right? You will get control of your feelings by not saying make me in your senses. You make me, this makes me, this makes me angry, right? People watch TV, especially with politics. This makes me angry. This guy makes me angry, right? <laughs> well, that's the idea with politics. They get you so revved up that you vote the way they're telling you to vote. That's why the rhetoric is so high. Because that works. They know. They've done the studies. These psychological... People know what works to manipulate other people, good or bad. They know what it works. We've done all the tests. We've done all the studies. These studies started uh, before the 20th century and really ramped up during the 20th century, and they're still going on now by companies, by schools, by governments. We know what gets people to do things. It's not a mystery, and it's definitely not a mystery for the narcissist or narcissistic types. They're just looking for you to give them all the answers. And this sentence gives them all the answers. Never say make me. Never say make me. Unless, ding, 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 <laughs> you want to trick them. And I have done that. And it does work. They will bring it up again and again. Uh, until, I mean, if you don't react to it. And I didn't. I didn't react to it like it upset me. So eventually the narcissist dropped it. But honestly, the narcissist brought it up about six, seven, eight times. Thinking that this was going to aggravate me. That's all they're trying to do. So what do you say in place of you make me feel or this makes me feel? This is a good one. I am feeling. I'm feeling. Um, I didn't pay this bill. This was a year ago or two years ago, or three years ago. I didn't pay this bill <laughs> when I should have. What is it? I'm feeling shameful. I'm feeling like I can't, like I'm not responsible enough. I feel bad about this. I feel bad about losing additional money on top of that, right? I'm feeling, but it doesn't necessarily mean that this situation makes me feel. Now you're telling your mind that I am feeling. Yeah, you can use this I am sentence but I wouldn't use it around a narcissist. Again, you should be gray rocking the narcissist. You shouldn't be telling them what you're feeling unless you want to throw them off, right? Throw them off the scent. You shouldn't be telling them what you're feeling, what you like or what you don't like. Sometimes I would throw things in there that I actually didn't like and I said I liked and I actually said things that I didn't like. TV shows, movies, feelings, Things they said, things that were done, and it, what it does is it scrambles the narcissist's um, intel, if you will, on their mental battlefield, and they don't really know which way you're going. They don't really know what makes you tick anymore. 
and with gray rocking and some other techniques you can get a lot of relief from the narcissist this way so yes say i i am feeling i am feeling and this tells your mind and the universe or however you want to think about it what you're feeling but that also has the double advantage that it tells your mind this is what i'm feeling it's not necessarily true though this is what i'm feeling but that doesn't mean the situation is making me feel that way i'm making me feel that way you see your mind will catch on very fast try not to say anything like this around other people because if they're going to manipulate you they will use your feelings against you uh, but if you're around people that you know are empathetic, you could say it. I am feeling, and they'll they will readjust the situation to make you not feel that way. Like today, I was in a situation where I was feeling angry because things didn't go our way, and my lunch fell on the floor, my breakfast fell on the floor, and somebody wasn't doing what they were supposed to be doing. So the whole situation was a whole train wreck. So I was feeling angry. And then I just realized the person that was yelling at me was a supervisor, but she wasn't angry at me. She was trying to tell me how to get the other person to do what they were supposed to. She was trying to help me. She wasn't angry at me. So why was I feeling angry? <laughs> right? She was yelling because she was like, I'm trying to save you. That's what I want. So what I was feeling wasn't actually the situation and I was letting the situation get out of control in me. My breakfast fell on the ground. Okay, that's not great, but it is what it is, man. I'll survive, right? I'm not going to die because of that. It was a great um, homemade egg McMuffin with sliced pork. Oh, it was great. It was great. Melted cheese. But I digress. Yes, <laughs> it was... Ah, right. And the eternal optimist would be like, dude, you didn't need that. That has all kinds of salts in it and stuff, man. You need healthy food anyway. You dodged a bullet, right? <laughs> okay, maybe I did. It doesn't really matter. It's it's all um, it's all good. It's all good, right? And here we are, because I can say, I am feeling, and then I can examine those feelings and break them down and see if the situation fits what I'm feeling what I'm feeling actually fits the situation. And if the situation is truly what I thought it was, then you can break it down. It's a, it's a bit of being like your own psychiatrist because this is just what they do anyway. You know, what do you feel? You know, how do you feel about that? <laughs> they don't say, how did this situation make you? They don't do that, right? That's, kind of, that's not going to work. It's not going to help you. It's going to do some things. Okay, so I hope this helps. Let's live our best lives, people. Let's go out there and live our best lives. All right.